Queevy here with another tutorial. Um, I want to make a few apologies first about the mic. I know it's bad. I lost the mic I usually use. I need to find it, and when I find it, I'll have a better mic. Uh, again, I'm sorry about the quality of the video because it's I'm sort of doing this in a jiffy. I mean, I don't really know how. Yeah, it's really fuzzy. But I guess it is what it is. So, um, this tutorial is going to be an introduction to Artificial Intelligence Lisp. Um, I'm going to just be doing a uh, baseline tutorial on Lisp today. Uh, maybe later today I'll do an intro tutorial on uh, general problem solvers in Minimax trees. Uh, and that will be more AI stuff, but this will not be an AI, this will just be how to use Lisp. Um, I'm going to go over the basic data structures of Lisp and essentially how Lisp works and how we will be designing programs in Lisp. Um, I will go into more data structures as we go along, like if I see a new data structure I will let you know. Uh, also, I'm doing this from my class in AI, so I, I'll progress making more videos when I learn more stuff in AI. Um, so essentially what, uh, um, what, 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 what will we be covering? Well, uh, today I'm going to be covering an introduction, then I'll be covering general problem solvers in the next tutorial, then mini-max trees and uh, um, programs that play board games and stuff like that. Um, I, I will be using a lot of the algorithms from the AMA textbook. Uh, the AMA 3rd edition is what we use in AI. That's the textbook that supplies the algorithms, and I will be explaining the algorithms and appending our own code and such, or um, some of their code that does other stuff, and I will explain that in later tutorials. So I just want to give credit to that um, uh, specific textbook because they're really good. Uh, this, this algorithm here, this really simple algorithm, is not from the textbook because it's not an AI. It's just Lisp. Um, I want to I want I want to say one thing that I actually hate Lisp, but the reason I'm using Lisp is because it is a good um, AI language, and a lot of the algorithms are written in Lisp. I probably will make some tutorials later on in Java um, or JavaScript with a lot of the same programs, but written differently. And and the good thing about all other programs is they are use more stacks and heaps and stuff that. Um, well, they're better. Um, but Lisp is actually a very old language. It was made in the 60s, so of course it's not as good as the other ones. But the good thing about it is it has different types of data structures that are very helpful. Okay, so let's go into this. Um, how does Lisp work? Well, it mainly works by iteration and recursion. A lot like other ones, but it's a little more recursion based. And it's got different data structures, like I said. So uh, let's go into the. Let's just break apart this code. Actually, I'll show you to how to run this code. So I'm using a Windows 8, which is what most people use. If you use a Macintosh computer, it's way easier to compile. But I'm using Windows 8 because it's harder to compile. So I'm not putting the download link. I'm probably going to put the download link in the description. But you just need to go look up Closure CL or CCL on um 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 Google. Um, and then you get a zip file with CCL in it. You open up that file and you want to use uh, your bit system. Uh, I'm using this. I'm using a, uh, uh, this bit. Uh, essentially, what you need to do is you need to run this program. Actually, <laughs> first thing you need to do is have a program to run. And, um, yeah. So, so let, let me go on how to run the program, because this is important. Uh, if you have a Macintosh computer, it's as simple as running file execute, and you have a listener and everything, and it's great, and it's lovely. But with Windows, it's a little more complicated. So, um, first off, everything's parentheses. There's everything is parentheses. So, uh, what we need to do is we need to load up our file. Um, so, our file is in the downloads folder, and it's called tutorial.lisp. And then once you do this, oh, nope. Okay, once you do this, you hit enter. Oh, I, I, I screwed up. Um, let me unscrew up. It's a little old and a little out of date, and it crashes a lot, so that's something you have to sort of account for, is the stupidness of lists of uh, the IDEs. I mean, this is actually the best IDE for Windows. Lisp works is stupid because it, it, you have to program Lisp differently to make it work. Um, there we go. So once you run it, you can see it loads it um, here. It loads it, and then you can run your functions. Um, 
But let me let me break apart this code here. So the first thing we need to know is what is a car and what is a cooter. So um, imagine you have a list. Um, everything in Lisp is based off of lists, and a list is essentially a a um, an array. It's a series of elements, and um, you, you you can have it as a string, you can have it as integers, and you can have it as as really anything. And these are known as S expressions. So S expressions, I think they stand for symbol expressions or something like that. But an S expression is a essentially just a list, or a string, or an integer, um, and, uh, no, I think list s expression, no, okay, I got that wrong, a an s expression is a string, or an integer, which is a single item, and then a list, I'm getting it wrong, but essentially, an s expression is something you write in list, lisp, that is not a command, um, so a list, or Anything like that. So, uh, that's a little hard to describe without pen and paper, and I don't have pen and paper, and I don't feel like getting out pen and paper because I'm sick and I'm tired, and it's the weekend, and I, I, I don't, I don't want to put any effort forward. Um, so let's start off with what we have here. So, uh, we have a function called our last. You set it up with a parenthesis, defun, our, our last, and then a parameter. So a parameter could be anything, but in this case, it's a list because as you can see, we're using it as lists. So um, we have here a cooter and a car. A cooter is, so a car is the first element in the list and a cooter is everything else. So essentially what we're doing here is cond is the if statement. Um, you don't have to have cond but it's more widely used. Uh, cond null cooter car. And essentially what this says is if the cooter and the car is null, so if the entire list is null, um, you could say null a, but this is better because it's more reliable. And then you have t, which is else, otherwise you're going to append to a new list the cooter of a, you're going to run the program again of the cooter of a, so essentially what this is doing is it's, it's, it's narrowing down um, our list, so, so instead of just, so we could have um, we, we could just print the, uh, the, the, f the first element of the list, or we could print the last element. This is print printing the last element. So you're going to run the program again of the cooter of A. So, so you're gonna, essentially what you're doing is you're going down to the end until it's null, until the entire list is null. So, so, so what, what you're, what you're going to do is you're going to end up with a list of like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A. And then you're going to um, find the... You're going to check to see if that's null. If it's not null, you're going to run, you're going to run um, this again. And essentially what you're going to do is you're going to narrow that down into um, um, one. Uh, no, you're going to narrow that into uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, A. Because you, you knock out one, so you have 2, 3, 4, 5, A. Then you run it again, 3, 4, 5, A. Then you run it again, 4, 5, A. And then you run it again, 5, A. And then run it again, A. And then run it again, null. And you say, okay, well, it's null, so you're not going to run this again. But because append is here, it's the last element you ran. So it's going to re uh, return A. And, and let, let me prove this to you. So if we, if, if we go here and we run um, the functions, you're, essentially what you're doing here is you're calling the function in, in this. You're going to run our last. Um, so what do we say? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A. You're going to run A. Um, so, let, let's write a simpler program that um, will just... Oh, and another thing is, names of functions are not case-sensitive. So, we're going to do our first. And this, this is simple. This is just simple. All we have to do is we don't have to have any cons. Actually, yes, we do. We have to do cond. Um, no. And you have to have a parenthesis, and then what you want. So, a parenthesis, null, um, oh, uh, hold on, I like, no, I like to have this there, I like, I like that more, uh, um, if you have, if the null, if you have null of cooter of A, it's going to be Car of A. So this just checks to see if we have an empty list. And then what we need to do is we need to do um, else.
append. And um, all we need to really append is the car of A. We don't need to run it again. Um, so you're just finding the first element. So um, should work. I don't know if this will work or not. Uh, let's load our let's um, load our program again. So our, what is it? Our first, I assume, right? Yes. Yep. There we go. It returns the first element. So let's let's run this again and let's make this. A, D, and then it returns A. Or actually, that's a bad example because we have A here, so A, R. It returns A. It returns the first element. And that's essentially how Lisp works. It's mainly recursion based and it's mainly list based, which is why it's called Lisp P. So, Lisp program. Lisp. So, um, yeah. So, so that's the basics of Lisp. Um, that's the basic data structures, basic of what you need. Um, of course, I'm, when I run across more data structures and we analyze more code, I will explain what everything does, I'll explain what everything means, and I'll go through it. Um, but, uh, yes, or in a later tutorial, um, probably after Mainax, I will go into file reading in A star and such like that. I may not go very far into A star because it's not very AI. It's not really an AI. It's more of just something. Um, I'll also in later tutorials make a haiku and or not a haiku, a sentence generator. Once I can um, access that code, um, I have it in on the school computers. Um, I, I ran and I analyzed and I wrote a I wrote a I wrote a paper on the the program from AMA. And so um, I have the code at school, but I don't have it at home. So I will get that later. Um, I know this uh, this these tutorials are a little cheap because they're a little bit like. You know, from the textbook, but um, that's essentially what I have, because because artificial intelligence, you really have to be a college or a, somewhat a college person to understand how to write these programs on your own. Um, but I think as a high school, and I think as amateurs as we are, I think just looking at algorithms, look at looking at famous algorithms that have been developed, like Minimax trees, it will be good. Um, also, uh, in later tutorials, I'll make PowerPoints for Minimax trees and how to use Minimax trees and stuff like that. But, uh, yes, essentially, there we go. So, thank you all, Squids, for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I know it's been a while since I've made a tutorial. I've been busy with organic chemistry, I've been busy with AI, and I've been busy with tutoring on-level chemistry. It's been busy. It's been a busy, it's been a busy year so far. Also, I want to give a shout out to Moby Dick. I've been reading that. I love the book. Um, it's an amazing book. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you in later tutorials. Au revoir.